Geek Myths, a novel about life, love, and the pursuit of sonic screwdrivers. Available in paperback and Kindle edition from Amazon. Scanning for audio. Welcome, welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. A quick one. Again, I've snuck off at work for my 15 minute break to spend it with you, my probably attractive listeners. Ah, uh, yes. Now, the main range release from this month is a welcome return and something that I feel should have happened some time ago of Chameleon. So that's Chameleon, my favourite all time companion, Tegan, and Turlo. It was pretty high on my list. Yes, I was just the right age to be a big fan of the Fifth Doctor at the time. And, well, you know, Tegan, Janet Fielding, some of my favourite people. Yes, I know they're different people. I know they're separate. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a fool. I just want to say that I've always liked Janet's performance and I've always liked Tegan as a character. Someone willing to stand up for themselves. It was quite rare. And she made the character her own. And thanks to Big Finish, she's managed to expand it while remaining within the boundaries. blah de blah you know all this already. You're here for me to talk about this story. In fact, you're probably here to hear me talk about Chameleon. You see, Big Finish haven't actually got round to putting Chameleon into a story. Now I know it's because the actor who is doing the voice is no longer with us, which is always a problem. But they've managed to get John Coolshaw the famous English impressionist and actor and big Finnish fan and massive Doctor Who fan in To Do The Part. Chameleon was a wasted character. They'd spent a lot of money bringing in an actual robot. I know, an actual robot in the 80s. That couldn't possibly have gone wrong. And in rehearsals it looked great. And then the guy who controlled him, well, again, died. So that's a bit of a problem. So he was only ever truly in one, well, two stories. Now, ideally, what you could have done was had Chameleon turn into, well, a human being and then have somebody play the part. But they didn't bother. Chameleon just kind of wandered the corridors being a bit weird. He's not exactly Handles, he's definitely not K9, but he is an electronic companion. One of the big three. He's definitely Ron's position though, but that's mainly because we didn't get to experience him on audio. But this whole series of audio dramas is going to have him in it. Now, you go from thinking that the chameleon is just a puppet of the master, all the way across to having him as a bit of a hero when he eventually leaves, which is a bit odd, but you can't really win them all. Yeah? So, what you need is a bit of character development in between. You've got to get to a point where our heroes and our main cast like him, and they will defend him. Well, that's the whole emotional arc for these stories. And I get it. I get that we have to have Chameleon reintroduced, which is a big ticky list. We've got to have some character development. We've also got to establish an actual character for this person. And so on. I mean, he's almost the ood in how malleable he is. Main range release number 247, Devil in the Mist. The TARDIS deposits... The Doctor, Tegan, Turlow and their android ally Chameleon aboard a prison ship. A ship with just one prisoner. The last warlord of a monstrous, mind-bending mimic able to turn themselves into mist. A ship that's in trouble and it's about to make a crash landing on a planet of mists. Written by Kevin Scott. Directed by Ken Bentley. So, that's the background for this story. Now, some people email me every so often and say, why do you always universally love Doctor Who stories, especially the big Finnish stuff? It's not always true. And sadly, this story is one of those. I know on paper it works beautifully. It's great. But there's a white water rapid scene, which is great, really well performed in everything, but I'm just sitting there listening going... Uh, And then, and I know it's important, 
And yes, the story does strip down into three very specific areas. You can picture it in uh, the bits that were filmed on studio, the bits that were filmed in on 16mm uh, film, all of that. You can even picture some of the slightly dodgy BBC effects under the water. It all works, and the, the morphing of the chameleon and his conversations and everything. You can completely buy into it. It just wasn't really for me. All Doctor Who can't be for you. It can't. It's impossible. Well, right, it isn't impossible, but it probably isn't. And this story just didn't tick all of my boxes. I'm not saying it was bad by any stretch of the imagination, because that's just not true. And you can tell there's been a hell of a lot of work gone into this. Seriously, it's a very complicated piece of drama, bringing all of the threads together. There's a brilliant alien race, space hippos, which would have looked awful on screen, but on audio work. You've got a lovely bit of world building where you've got some people, you know, having mud on the uh, control deck of the ship. You've got an alien creature that is made of mist. You've got the Doctor who's actually in a lot of trouble and peril. And if you didn't know for a fact that he survived, then, well, you know, you'd be worried. The Doctor is in a surprisingly large amount of peril. Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps what I need to do is go back and listen to this story one more time just to give it the benefit of the doubt. Because you know what? I actually want to. I enjoyed the chameleon's entry really well. So perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps this is actually for me. I don't know. Tell you what. Here's the trailer. Listen for yourself. Make up your own minds and then get back to me. Tell me what you think. Oh, and on the subject of emailing in, I'm guessing absolutely no one out there wants to hear Geek Myths as an audiobook because I received absolutely no emails about that. Fair enough. The world has spoken. So until next time, be seeing you. Uh, you, you might want to grab hold of something. Why? Wow. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, Devil in the Mist. Hello, I'm the Doctor. I believe I owe you an apology. Step out of the box. Whoa, you're posing space armor. That's not something you see every day. What did you call us? Uh, Tegan, Chameleon, Cello. These are the Harrogane, a noble race of warriors known throughout the universe for their understanding and forgiveness. This was an act of sabotage. You are in league with the prisoner. What prisoner? Captain, the force field. I, I can't hear the force field. There's a good reason for that. No. Keep back. No! What's happening down there? If that prisoner's escaped, none of us are safe. Indeed. The Zamglithi enslaved billions through a combination of mind control and intimidation. Their empire prospered for over 300 years. So where is he now? Where indeed? Please, please don't let him. A real meeting of mine. Just wait a minute. Well, what's all this about a prisoner? Are we in trouble here? Aren't we always? Against the wall! I suggest we do what she says. But, Captain, if this prisoner has escaped... Then we're all dead. Big finish. We love stories. We have to get back to the TARDIS. Finally. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>